Hey, it's Max Flinders. Thanks for watching Motor America on YouTube. Make sure you comment and subscribe. Here we go when the light goes off. We're rolling. Super Sport race number one. Josh Heron didn't get the launch that he certainly hoped he had. Aaron on the outside on that Ducati, he's going to funnel in, and it looks like Ty Scott's going to take the lead on that Vision Wheel M4X star Suzuki. He'll get that lead over Landers, Rocco Landers on that Landers Racing Yamaha. And just like that, Heron jumps himself up into second place. You can see this is the where they start headed back up on the ridge. Look at Ty Scott blocking that inside. Heron had the idea that that's where he wanted to go. Yeah, but when you're this early in the race and you're already being defensive, you know that you've got a little bit of weakness somewhere as Heron tries to at least push the issue. But of yeah. course, third place now is right there, Rocco Landers. Heron wants to get out front and set that pace and a little bit of wide from from Ty Scott. Ty there. Scott, the 16-year-old. And I think for Rocco, you know, this is where we've seen him struggle kind of at the beginning of the races. He, he was a lot better at it at Road America, and now he's there with the leaders at the beginning. Talking to the team and talking to Rocco earlier, he said the bike's working better than ever. They've made some steady changes that have been all positive all around. They're going to continue to chip away at it and give him what he wants setup-wise. But as far as, you know, Rocco's plan, they've been making a plan, laying it out. He's really been working hard with Josh Hayes on this to try and keep him focused. And so far, he's been executing their plans you know, very well so far this week. Luke Power on the back of these guys as well now, trying to get up there. And something must have happened to Rocco Landers because both Lockoff and Almeida have got through, so we didn't see that. Yeah, Lockoff put his hand in the air there for a moment, Jason, after that happened. So we've seen him hurt with his shoulders in the past. This is a nice thing to see him kind of keeping these guys. And here you go. Here's Heron the big now. move up the Heron inside goes, up goes the Heron. Inside. So there it is. So now we're going to see if Ty Scott, if what he thought about, the pace that Heron has, if Heron's going to be able to start setting sail. I said last year, and you can look here, we're going to look back a little bit more. Heron actually looks over his shoulder and just slides right up underneath Ty Scott to where Ty can't turn the bike in. But I thought when we left Road America that this could be a track that we could see Heron shine at. And both Tyler Scott looking like they're getting ready to do their fastest laps of the race. And look at Almeido trying really hard to force that pass up underneath Lockoff there. The Heron and Scott are going to run the fastest laps of the race right now when they come across. All the while, Rocco Landers trying to regain composure and find the early pace that he had at the beginning part of this race. Yeah, it's really, it's, it's, it's a common thing that we've seen from Rocco, unfortunately. So it's just something that doesn't feel right for him when the full tank's fuel, and he's got brand new tires on. And to come to these larger displacement, he goes right to a 750. Yeah, he did, and he's he's obviously been very, very impressive. I'm looking forward to hearing what he has to say about the small mistake he might have made to give Josh Heron that extra bit. See the bike hopping all over the place. Almeida really starting to apply the pressure now on Ty Scott as they come through. He's going to have a go here, maybe. Yeah, Ooh, he, that was he close. tried Lockoff in that area earlier, and Almeida looks really comfortable to me. Also allowing Lockoff and Landers to close back in. So right now, Ty Scott's got them queuing up behind him, and uh, the difference in lines between these two guys, and the CF Almeida thinks about having a shot at Ty Scott as they get down here into this last corner. Not quite close enough again. Is just heating up right now as these riders, oh, it oh, looked man. like Ty Scott, maybe? No, I had think a Ty bit Scott's of an issue. not as comfortable over there, and Rocco just had a little bit more edge grip and corner speed up over the top of the brow of that hill. Let's see what Rocco does with Ty Scott through this big long turn six. You can see, Greg, how defensive he's being going in there. Door open. And just opened that door, didn't he? That's exactly what happened. He got in there a little bit too tight, ran that bike out wide, and look at Almeido. He's working on lockoff again, trying to figure out a way to get past the 44. You know, Rocco really likes how the bike feels and moves around under a lighter fuel load toward the end of the race and talking to him he said physically he feels the best at the end of the race it was just a matter of managing the tires here the surface is a little bit newer it is so very abrasive so just really focusing hard on staying on the edge of those tires but he was prepared to go the full race distance and battle to the end and he's doing just that right now Laka, um, both Josh Heron and Ty Scott are both on extra softs on both front and rear but when you look at that Extra soft front, soft rear for lockoff. So he's on a different tire than his own, than his teammate. In fact, Heron's gonna take it through the final right-hand corner onto the front straightaway and take his Warhorse HSVK Racing Ducati New York Pentagali V2 to another big victory. And Heron style, front wheel in the air. Oh, and it looks like lockoff gets around for that final podium wow. spot. And Sam lockoff with a crafty move down the hill will take over the position and hold on to it. Oh, and he has to make that chicane.